as it still includes the design of steel shear connections, the supporting member can be another beam or can be a column. The column can be a Y flange member or can be an HSS member. If the column is an HSS, what are the limit states that are applicable in this kind of design? This is Javier Encinas, and today we're going to design completely from scratch an example of a shear connection of a W beam to an HSS column. The statement of the problem is as follows. The beam reactions are dead load, 15 kips, live load, 15 kips. The beam is a W14 by 26, and the column is HSS 10 by 10 by 5 16. The goal is to design the connection and produce all the calculations for these limit states. Let's get started. When we open ASB Steel, we see the project manager. Here we can see the modules included in the package, base plate and anchorage, steel columns, steel and composite beams, shear connections, moment connections, and web openings. In this example, we're gonna create a calculation for a shear connection. Let's click on this button. Let's call this calculation as example. Add. And the calculation has been added to the tree. Double click on this node. And this is a template of a shear connection design in Azip Steel. In the geometry tab, we enter all the geometric information of the example. We're going to use a single plate since we are designing an HSS column. It's common practice to use a single plate as a connector. In the support tab, select HSS column. To specify the column size, let's click on Steel Database. The column is 10 by 10 by 5 16 select and automatically the column properties have been added to this uh, template let's click on the beam tab we know that is a w14 by 26 go to database let's select 14 by 26 select and the beam has been added to the template if we click on the graph tab we can see graphically what we are doing so this is a w14 by 26 and the support member is a HSS 10 by 10 by 5 16. Let's click on the plate tab. Here we specify the dimensions of the plate, uh, the plate width, four inches is usually enough for the purpose of the connection. And the connection is gonna be bolted to the beam. Could be welded if we decided to do that, like that. Plate thickness, let's say that is 3 8, which is also typical for these kind of connections. Let's go to the materials tab to enter the material properties. For the support, it's an HSS, so the FY is 46 KSI. For the beam, FY is 50. For plate, we say that is 50 as well. FU, 65. For bolts, let's use three quarters of an inch bolts, A325. And for weld, let's use quarter of an inch fillet weld. If we click on the loads tab, here we enter the loads given in the statement of the problem. We know that the dead load is 15 kips. And live load is also 15 kips. And basically we have completed all the information given in the statement of the problem. Now we need to design the connection based on this information. Let's click on the at a glance tab. This is a summary of the calculations. Here we can see some deficiencies. For example, the bolt shear rupture is failing because the load combination of the applied load, 1.2 dead plus 1.6 life, is 42 kips. And we are providing only 33. If we click on the condensed tab, we can see a more detailed set of calculations. In this table, here are all the limit states. This is the controlling limit state is ball shear rupture and these are the failing load combinations since the ball shear rupture is failing that indicates that we need more bolts since we have enough room for another bolt let's add one more bolt let's go back to geometry tab bolts instead of three rows let's say four rows and then this one more bolt has been added to the connection there's a problem here because the shear plate is touching the beam flange and the program is reporting this as a geometric constraint check and it's not good. So let's go to the condensed tab. Now with this additional bolt, the capacity has increased to 52 kips. 
and it's more than 42. So now the capacity is passing, but we need to fix the issue of the geometric constraints. So the connector length is failing. Let's, let's go to the geometry tab again, plate. So right now the plate has a one inch eccentricity, which is this one inch here. We need to reduce that to zero. So that is center to the beam like that. So the problem has been solved and the program is reporting that as okay. Go to the contents tab again. Here we can see the final design. Basically, this is a controlling limit states, ball shear rupture. All the other limit states are more than this amount, which is greater than the controlling load combination 42. So it's passing. The ratio is 0.80 and the design strength is 52.4 kips. There are some design checks by code. The minimum plate thickness, is the ratio is 0.83. Minimum plate weld size ratio is 0.94. The plate shear bending interaction ratio is 0.15. And the support wall slenderness ratio is 0.89. So everything is passing. Also the geometric constraints are okay. If we go to the detail tab, these are more detailed set of calculations, step by step. These are the on-factor loads. These are the combined loads, and this is the connection strength with all the limit states. Ball shear rupture, plate bearing holes at beam, plate shear yielding, and so on. And the controlling limit state is ball shear rupture at beam. The nominal strength is 68.8 kip. If you are affected by fee, this is the design strength, 52.4. These are the design checks, minimum plate thickness, and so on. And these are the geometric constraints. Everything is passing. Graphically, we can see the connection. From view, this is the shear plate bolted to the beam with four bolts and welded to the column with quarter of an inch fillet weld both sides. Finally, in top view, here we can see the HSS column and here the W beam connected by the shear plate. Let's see what happens if instead of a single plate, we use a single angle like this. We can see here immediately that there's a geometric constraint check deficiency. It's basically that the uh, angle is too wide, so there's no room for, uh, for the welding. But it's preferable usually to use a shear plate instead. What happens if we increase the load substantially? For example, if instead of 15, let's say 30 kips, live and say 30 keeps dead let's go to at a glance now there are multiple deficiencies because the, the load now is 84 keeps and we are just providing 52 so we need more more bolts again and also is failing in beam bearing at bolt holes so in this case since we cannot increase the number of bolts we need to increase the diameter of bolts maybe we can use one inch diameter bolts. Now this limit state is fixed, but this limit state is controlling now. Plate shear rupture. We need to increase the thickness of the plate. Let's go to the geometry tab. Plate. Instead of 3 eighths, let's say half an inch. And now it's fixed. Since we increase the thickness of the plate, now the welding is failing to the minimum requirements. We need to increase the size of the weld. Let's go to the materials tab, then weld instead of quarter of an inch, let's say five sixteenths, and now it's passing. So everything is passing now in this design. Please note that the program also includes a true plate connection alternative. In some cases, it's necessary when, when we need to increase the capacity substantially. In this case, it's not necessary. As you can see, it's very easy to design shear connections to HSS columns using as deep steel. The design can be completed and optimized in a matter of minutes, but otherwise, if you try to do it by hand, it could take probably hours. If you like the software, please visit the website www.azipsoft.com and download the free 15-day trial. Please subscribe to the channel if you want to receive notifications in the future for similar videos. Thank you for your attention.